first thing I like to do is frame up the shot. I always just get the camera on some sticks and you can basically have somebody stand in. So I'm gonna go ahead and just roll. I'm gonna roll on this camera right now and I'll put an overlay of what it actually looks like. Here's our frame, obviously it's way too blasted out. So I'm going ND filters, there's two stops, four stops, and here's six stops. We're looking somewhat decent on exposure. So if I know the sun is back here, okay? You see the sun, it's on this side of the frame. Basically what I need to do is I wanna wrap the light. So I want to actually have Rob, where he's setting up this ultra bounce. I'm about to tell him to swing it to the other side. And the reason I'm gonna have Rob do that, so this ultra bounce is gonna push light back in. So I want that light to go from basically the edge of Justin's cheek here and wrap across his face. You're always setting your exposure of the camera to the thing that you can't control. So basically I can't control how bright the sun is. It is what it is. I can't make it brighter, I can't make it darker. Now, I don't wanna be blowing on my highlights. So what I'll do is I'll get my waveform up here. I'll look at it. I can see it's just clipping a tiny bit on the edge of the frame there. Generally speaking, for our subject, Justin here, we want him facing a little bit more towards the key light. So or the, in, in this particular case, the key light is the six by six. So why don't you swing back around on this side, that's cool. So our, our, this is a six by six ultra balance. This one is from uh, Shimera, I'll link it below. But basically it's here on C-stands and what it's doing is it's pushing light back in towards Justin's face and we need to get it a little bit closer actually. But what we can do on our wide shot, this is generally like a, for me it's generally like a waist up shot and he's gonna be looking basically like right here in my hand and I frame him like on a third. We'll move the cone and all that stuff. But that's kind of a start. So I can see the sun is really peeking through a lot there and if I put a matte box on or something, I can control the flares like that. And that's actually a pretty decent looking shot. We need to get some more exposure on his face. So that'll be step two. So right now, we're not having enough exposure on Justin's face. So what we need to do is we need to get our source closer. It's gonna bring more light onto his face. So Ryan, yep. can you help uh, help him move the six by? Well, it's like move it significantly closer. Video. All right, yeah, cool. Funny. Okay, hey, that's actually looking nice guys. Good. It's a little better. Just do me a favor. Uh, that 600D needs to come out of the frame a bit because it's in the frame. I'm gonna just reposition this. So can we get this on a boom arm, I guess? All right, so generally speaking, the subject in the interview, if you're doing that sort of like off-camera interview look, they're gonna be looking more towards the light source and then the cameras are gonna go on the opposite side. I'll put a diagram of what that looks like. But they'd be looking more towards the light, that way it lights their face. And then so Ryan, can you go turn that light off then on? So we'll show you, we're just taking the 600D, we're bumping it into our ultra balance here, so turn it off. That's off. So you can see his face is kind of in the shadows. Go ahead and turn it back on. Striking. And you can, it does look really natural though, the way it's, it's because it's balanced light, similar to what the sun's doing. And then if you come over here on the light, what we did is we took a quarter CTO, which is just a gel, and this is basically warming the light up. So it's basically warming it up similar to what the sun's already doing. That way it matches the same color temperature. Justin's looking beautiful as always. Yes. Sweet. Uh, we, so Rob, can you go ahead and mark it now? I think that looks pretty solid. For the B cam, generally what I'll do is I'll set the A cam first. I'll set all the exposure. And then if you're on the same system, uh, we're good. Okay. Thank you, bro. Then I'll, what I'll do is I'll basically just match settings. So. Lenses, I, I said it before, but I'm usually on a 35 here and then an 85 on my B cam. I usually like to be two focal lengths apart. So if I'm on a 35 on the A cam, I'd be on an 85 on the B cam. If I'm on a 50 on the A cam, I'd be on a 100 on the B cam. It's not a hard and fast rule, but it's a good starting place if you just kind of need to get something that's gonna look pretty good most of the time. That's what I usually go for. Then what I'll do is I'll match the settings. So I'm see I'm at 5600 white balance, ND8 stops, F2.0, ISO 800. Boom, I'm gonna match that exact same thing over here. So I'm gonna go F2.0, cool, give me one second. F2.0, ND8 stops, and ISO 800. Now we have a perfect match. Awesome, all set, thank you. All right, so we're setting up the client monitor. We're running two feeds to the client monitor. We got the Sumo 19, this is gonna be our, it's actually gonna be our B cam, just cause of the way it's set up. And I have my Teradek run into this sick little rig, which is like a little seven inch small HD monitor with the wireless built in. And then I just got a few parts that I rigged with uh, to the V mount which I'll link those below. It's basically a, a V-mount clamp from Watson. 
like a two inch 15 millimeter rail from small rig and then a 15 millimeter rail to NATO and then a NATO to this thing. But what you get is this sick little rig right here and then I just power everything off DTAP from the V-mount. You can just plop it down. So wherever your director is, you can just set it down on the V-mount. You have a nice little rig or if you kind of want to pick it up and go mobile, it's kind of a nice little deal. So very proud of that. But one, th one tip I have is when you're setting up your client monitors, generally speaking, your client wants to feel like they're part of the shoot. And probably what you want is to be able to have space to breathe and work with your client and not have your talent get nervous. So what I like to do is I'll put the director's monitor and the client monitor facing towards where your, your talent is gonna be interviewed. So they can still watch. If they wanna just watch the person. Okay, cool, cool, that's what's going on. Or if they wanna see what the feed looks like, boom, they got it right here. So you can kind of see it in real time. Whereas if I were to do the opposite and face it away, they're not gonna really wanna have their back towards the interview. And what they might end up doing is just dish on the client monitor, just kind of standing there watching the thing as it happens. So that's one tip I have. So we're doing audio. Anytime you're doing audio, I like two sources of audio for interviews, inside, outside, anywhere you are. Uh, I use these little Sennheiser AVX labs. They're pretty good. They're not like incredible. They're solid for me and they work. So what we're doing, lav one, we got our transmitter, lav one. Okay, cool. This is the Sennheiser MKE2 lav. It's a little tiny guy, but it's high quality. So what we do is we take these, they're called Rycote over covers. So we'll take one of these little sticky guys, make a sandwich basically. So this just goes in the center, okay? We take a little furry guy. So this basically, it's like a little mini dead cat. Same thing that you put on your mic, uh, like your standard shotgun mic for your camera. Squeeze that. And then when you're ready to put it on your talent, you peel that off and then you stick it generally under their shirt or if they have a jacket, you might hide it under the jacket but you don't want it right by the throat because you get a really throaty sound. You want it kind of more in the chest. So basically in line with like their, you know, like in line with like where the nipples would be. Basically, I don't know if it's weird to say. <laughs> but, but basically there's, there's usually a cavity right here and it helps get a more full sound of the voice. Second source of audio we're doing. Second source of audio is our shotgun. So remember we talked about this. This is gonna be boomed straight down and slightly towards the subject. I'll show you what that looks like when we're doing it because we're getting close on time. There's an inside here, there's an XLR cable. XLR goes here, right to ACAM. So we've got two sources. Source one is our shotgun. Source two is our laugh. Gives you two options for post-production. Sometimes one's gonna sound better than the other. You never know. So it's always good to have options. Another tip for the using audio for the outside interviews, you always need to be mindful of wind noise as well as all the other noise. But as long as you have the mic close, it's, it's pretty good usually but we'll use this thing, come on over here. So you may have seen these before, but this is just called a blimp. This one's from Rode. Basically what it does is it's a sound isolation device. So it's kind of like a dead cat. Same thing as a dead cat for your, just like your standard on a mic that would go on your camera. And as we're taking that shotgun, we're taking that shotgun and we're putting it into the blimp. Basically it goes like this. And then you plug this cable to the back. And this whole thing just slides in here. And that's just to help prevent wind noise. It's not perfect in every setting, but it's it's what most professionals are using when they're booming in audio. So it works pretty well for us. When you start your interview, you always want to have your questions prepared ahead of time. So in this particular case, my man Justin is the one who's preparing all the questions. Hey Justin, yeah. do you want to talk a little bit about like um, preparing interview questions? So part of the interview process is what we like to do is do a lot of prep work beforehand just to make sure we know who the person's gonna be, what they're gonna talk about, and then get some preliminary questions over to them. So I like to hold you know, conference calls prior to get myself introduced to the client and uh, get a feel for who they are and what they're gonna talk about. So all of the interviewers today have some preset questions that I've already asked them that they should have responses to, just to make sure that the process is as easy as possible and that there's no like ambiguity coming in as the person that's being interviewed. Um, so yeah, everyone should be fully prepped and you know, we have plenty of time to do as many retakes as possible because obviously it's their story and not ours. So yeah. Sweet. Thanks bro. Another thing too is just, it's always helpful. Justin always does such a good job of this is basically making sure the interview questions and the direction you're taking it is in line with what the client's vision is. Because ultimately like it's their story and you wanna make sure you're portraying whatever the company is and, and the type of light that they wanna be portrayed in. 
So for me on the camera side, what I, what I like to do before the interviews is I'll get my A cam, get my B cam, and I'll basically check, I'm checking for a few things. I'm checking number one for exposure. So I'm using, I'm using tools like false color and I'm using tools like waveform. And those are basically making sure my skin is properly exposed and that I'm not blowing my highlights. Those are the two main things I'm looking for. And then just from a technical perspective, what I like to do is I like to make sure I've got at least an, one hour of battery in each camera before we start and at least one hour of media in each camera. And the reason for that is when you start an interview and you get the flow going, you're asking your different questions. Okay, so hey, you know, why did you get into this profession? Why did you start doing this? What's, what's most interesting about it? You don't have to break that flow, but hey, cut, uh, we gotta switch a battery, okay? So it's important that you basically always have your cameras ready to go so they can fall into the background and whoever's directing the interview can ask the questions and get a nice flow state with the interview subject. So what we're doing right now, it's called getting client sign off. So generally speaking, once you've shown your image, you've got it to a place where you love that, it. You want to change anything? You ask cool. that question, they give that answer. Yeah. Solid. Looks good. Love it, looking good, looking good. All right, that's good. Last thing I'll do, just in terms of exposure, you generally want the bright part of the face to be green. If you're using this type of false color, that means it's between 50 and 75. It's pretty much good for most skin tones. If they have really dark skin tones, it might be slightly below that. Or if you're going for more of like a moody, sort of like low key look. But it, this is not that. So this is uh, properly exposed. You're getting a little bit of that red, but what you can do is you're like, oh shoot, are my highlights clipping? Red means your highlights are clipping. What you do is you look at your waveform. You can see it's not. Cool, and then the other thing you do is you just kill your LUT. Brian, you can Rob. see Rob, highlights are not clipping. How you doing, sir? I'm Griffin. I'm Ryan, nice to meet you, Griffin. Pleasure to meet you. Alrighty. Thanks for being here. I'll oh, take this. Perfect. How's the day going so far? Good, how about you? It's going great. Yeah, going real well. So with this guy, I'm sure you've probably done this a couple times. So you can take this. Usually uh, we're, we're cutting the interview off here. So if you want to just kind of drop it in your pocket or just kind of throw it on the side, I actually kind of like how I have mine there. Yep. That's a pretty good little setup. And with this guy, what we do is usually we'll just if you have a tie, we might take it. Uh, do you mind if I just yeah, apply it? Okay, cool. You don't have to. Cool. Tuck this right in here. I've never used one of these before. Just tuck one of the clips. Yeah, so these ones are kind of nice because they hide, so this one's poking out a little bit. Let me tuck it in just a bit more. We may have to make an adjustment. Um, everybody's jackets are different. Okay. So let's see. Cool. We'll see how that is on camera. I want to get the headphones on. Hey, Ryan, you want to look at that monitor and tell me when it's just in? No, it's great. You're nice. Out. Coming down, coming down, yes. coming down. Hopefully go surf. Go surf? Still out. Oh, man, we should have filmed you surfing. That would have been way cooler out. than this. Still out. Good? Still Where out. do you usually go? Cool. Sweet. Uh, so, Justin, um, yep. if we get a motorcycle like that, I'll, yep. I'll just tap you on the leg. You'll, you'll probably know it, but uh, I'll, I'll tap you if we need to stop. Okay, sounds good. All right, so we just wrapped up our first interview for the day. We got one more to go. I think it went really well. So mega stoked on, come on over, how it went. Uh, I think I talked about it, but the cameras are on today. Uh, this is the C500R2, 35 mil lens, the Canon 35 1.4 version two, running the V mounts, full frame camera coat plate, uh, Cine 7 monitor, Orion Luth, our first AC. <laughs> He's always here with me. He's a beast. Um, so what we're doing, we're jumping over to the second interview. Generally speaking, I like to not film, if you have back-to-back -back interviews, I like to jump the sets a little bit so it looks a little different. So in the edit, it's just a little more exciting. You're not looking at the exact same th kind of shot. It's not so repetitive. So even if it's similar, it can be just a little bit different. And a lot of times what I'll do, if I know it's gonna be an interview that are going in the same edit, if I put the guy on the left for the first time, I'll put him on the right for the second time. So that way it's just a little bit of diversity in the shots. And the first thing I like to do before we move all this equipment over, I'll take my A-cam and I'll frame up my A-cam. So then we can build everything else around the A-cam. It's pretty much gonna be the same setup, but probably just flipped. So instead of justified on the right, it might just be justified on the left. But I don't know about that. We might scratch that depending on where the sun is, but for sure I always start with the A-cam. So the, the key thing with the Ultra is I like it where it's basically slightly above. I mean, I would probably even go up six inches on either side. And so when you think about lighting with like a LED softbox, you're usually, everybody knows you're usually lighting where slightly above, kind of on a three quarter angle. 
you're doing the exact same thing here. I wouldn't want it flat on, so it's like eliminating his neck quite as much. I want it eliminating more of his face here, so you can see the shadow there. So it's eliminating his face. It's still a soft light, but you still get a little bit of a defined line on the chin with a little bit of shadow. And then what the, the neck fillet does here is just basically absorbs light. Black absorbs light, so that way there's a little more of shadow on this side of the face. Generally speaking, in the shot, you're just looking for um, some shape across the face. Usually what's called Rembrandt lighting. Um, I'll put it on the screen what it is right here. But what that basically does is it gives contrast on the face. So come on over here and look at the screen. What we're doing with our frame in terms of composition, usually we'll put them on a third. So boom, boom, he's on a third. And what I like to do is you can have leading lines pointing to your subject and then he's separated off the background, meaning it's kind of blurry. And then another thing I like to do is have, it was Justin's idea to put him in the center. So you have repeating patterns, dark, light, light, dark, light, dark. So it's, there's contrast to the frame. It's not just one flat thing where it's all light or it's all dark. So that way you can kind of make your subject pop a little bit. It's one way to add uh, just kind of a three dimensional quality to the image. So what he's doing right now is he's, he's getting the slate in. This is helpful. So when you're in the edit, you can basically know like which take you're on, which interview you're on. And then when he's gonna clap it, it also help, helps to sync up the audio. You'll see one big audio uh, peak. Okay, you guys ready? Yep. Okay, let's roll cameras. B speed. A speed. S link, vignette, take one, soft sticks. All right guys, so that's pretty much it for today. We wrapped it up. We finished, uh, we had one interview yesterday outside, two today. I think they went pretty well. What do you think, Justin? Honestly, I think all the shots came out awesome. Uh, I think the client's gonna be super stoked on it. Huge props to the entire crew, especially you. DP, Griff the DP, as always coming through, I think, yeah, I think it couldn't have gotten better. You guys have already seen a bunch of shoots with uh, Justin, so make sure to check him out on social media. I'll link his handle or whatever it's called right here. You'll see it on the screen. And if you like this kind of content, consider hitting that subscribe button, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.